Hey guys, welcome to Jason Whiskey Wise and myself Jason bringing you whiskey review number 45 where today we're going to review the Mortlac 25 year old. So I've got myself a drink by the dram sample from them which cost me close to 75 pounds. Well, I think it was 70 pounds for this one and the postage and package. But anyway, I decided to start doing the reviews on the Mortlacs because they're some of my favorite whiskies and that's the top of the range. So I'll explain that as we get through. So I poured myself a quick dram before the video, just let it sell. And Mortlac produce four core expressions. Uh, that being the Rare Old, the Special Strength, the 18 and the 25. So four different core expressions as Diageo wanted to re-innovate and make them look as a luxury brand for the Mortlack range, which is normally used in, I believe, Johnny Blue and above. I think some other Johnny Walkers do also contain Mortlack because it's used as a blended whiskey. So we'll begin with my review assessment style structure. We'll begin with the age, which is a 25 year old whiskey. It is bottled at an ABV of 43% ABV. And we're looking at casks that different places have different things, but I was told it's one type of cask, but it's not a single cask. Um, but it's ex-bourbon cask, so quite an interesting style, ex-bourbon cask from the distillery. Now the distillery is the Mortlack Distillery, which you can see just over here, and they're nicknamed the Beast of Speyside because they produce such powerful, robust, fruity whiskies. Now, the actual company that owns them is Diageo, and a big spirit company owning Lagavulin, Talisker, Cragenmore, Kalila, just a few to name off the top of my head. So, they're based in Speyside, Scotland, a bit south of the Balvenie Distillery, at Glenfiddich and Caninvi. So, very close to a few distilleries. If you're visiting that area, you're going to have a quite a few different distilleries you can check out. Now, in terms of the price point, this is where I'm going to say, hold on to your seats, your phone, your laptop, your iPad, your computer. It is close to £470 for this bottle uh, to £520 for literally a half litre, which is absolutely insane stuff for a uh, whiskey in terms of 25 year old and being in a half litre. And it's because, as I said before, want to be perceived as a luxury brand whiskey. So, very high price tag. Uh, exclusivity wise, it is not exclusive, it is part of their core range. So, if anyone tells you it's limited or it's, you know, this or that, it's part of the core range. So, that's what it is. In terms of caramel colouring, they don't specify on this or the big bottle, so I'm going to go with a 50-50, yes or no, because the colour does look fairly light, but some companies can still add a few drops of caramel colouring just to make it all look uniform. So if you do know that one, leave it down below in the comment section, and I'll adjust it by putting yes or no somewhere over here or there, just so you guys know exactly if it is caramel colour. So, into the actual assessment of this whiskey, by looking at the colour of this whiskey, it does have a nice sort of dark, does it a deep amber colour to it? So, deep amber would be the colour if it is natural. If it's not, don't look at the colour. So anyway, into the actual assessment of the nose. So, into the nose. To start my assessment of the nose of this whiskey, it does start with a lot of rich, fruity characters. You're getting a lot of those dark, dry fruits, those plums, those figs, figs more or less taking center stage, quite rich and juicy, but then also drying plums, raisins, dates, sticky dates, and spices as well. They've got sort of a mixture of spices, a bit of cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, a little bit of uh, peppery, sort of dark, so I'd say black pepper. So quite an interesting nose on this one to begin. And then I'm getting a little bit of sweeter notes right behind that, and this reminds me more towards it's like sultanas, sun-dried sultanas, and there's a bit of those sultana skins as well, and sort of a mixture in a sort of combination, and you pour them into sort of some brown sugar, just sort of simmering, giving that sort of sweeter notes as well, just a little sweet aroma. So quite an interesting nose in this whiskey. I'm also picking out a little bit what reminds me of sort of that tobacco-y note, which is sort of old cigars or old books, and a little bit of a nutty note right on the end, but more or less quite rich in fruits and sweetness and spices. So anyway, let's next move into the actual palate for this whiskey. So assessment of the palate. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, to begin this one, very oily in texture. You actually feel it right, literally right as back as you can go, almost to your ears, and it just feels it right coming up to the front, sinking into your jawline, getting it into the taste buds, Mouth watering almost 
rich, fruity notes. So definitely the plum skins really playing themselves on the palate. The ABV felt initially much more stronger, but then as you leave it to settle, it just sort of naturally sort of becomes very smooth, easy drinking. Now, the way I describe it, it's almost like the beast is unrevealed. So you're getting literally all those rich, powerful, fruity notes. I'm getting also hints of spiced apple, a little bit of pear. A bit of what reminds me of uh, if you cut pineapple and you leave it to settle for like almost an hour, and then you sort of caramelize it, that sort of sweetness as well. But then those dark fruits of raisins, those figs, those plums, dates, prunes, all combined together, but not dry. Very juicy and succulent, almost like they're stewing in their own juices and you're just taking a massive bite. It's like they taking a fruitcake and just putting it, fruitcake mix, putting it all together and just taking a massive bite out of it. So fruity and it's still making my mouth water, which is just so fantastic. So I'm gonna have a second sip, what other notes we can taste, but also it's getting some spices over there, which we're all gonna unreveal in the second tasting. So second tasting. So from the second tasting, definitely a combination of orange and grapefruit peel, giving that little bit of citrusy character, refreshing the palate from those dried dark fruits. A little bit of oaky presence over there, but that's probably behind the age of this one and the casks over time. The spices that reveal themselves are more nutmeg. I'd say a little bit of all spice, cloves. Um, I was gonna say white pepper, but it's not so pungent, and then a gingery sort of quick, how do you, more towards a candy ginger, so you're getting that warmth, but then you're getting the sweetness coming right underneath. And then that brown sugar sort of stewing everything all together and just juices of the fruity notes, just continually lingering all over the palate, and then the walnuts again, offering a little bit of nutty characters. Really just continually going and going and going, and it's still just sitting in the jawline, sort of almost caressing the palate. Really great start. So anyway, let's next move on to the finish because this is one whiskey I can spend a lot of time with. So into the finish. So into the finish with this whiskey, it does start out more like a, I think you get the coffee notes, you get the gingery warmth, a very long finish with fruity characters. It reminds me more or less of spiced marmalade with a lot of zest literally put into it. And then as the longer you leave it, the zest sort of fades into a sort of a candied peel, giving that sweetness. And the spices are fading ever so slightly, but the finish keeps rolling on with those fruitier notes, continually carrying on and on and on. It's still mouth-watering, just so fantastic, the mouthfeel on this whiskey. Such a nice viscosity and... Ooh, lovely whiskey. So anyway, next I'm going to give my rating. And uh, this is actually going to be up there. It's one of my... One of the whiskies I tried last year and just blew my mind. Uh, I'm going to show you guys my initial rating I gave it last year. And this was the only whiskey that I gave last year that was in this, pri in this sort of rating. Which was 98 out of 100. But because of the price point of view, I am going to knock it down. Because back then I didn't actually think of the price. And... Ooh. No, I still have to give it... Sorry if I made the block ball go a bit funny there, but I'm gonna give it a 96 out of 100. This is just powerful, rich. Now I'm gonna pop up, up to 97. I love this whiskey, I can't help it. Uh, this is just so rich, fruity, the mouthfeel, the lingering finish. I know the price is a huge, huge boo-boo on their side from Diageo being put at like 500 pounds, but if you can get your hands on a dram, try this out, let me know what you think. Um, if you guys again in London, let me know. I'll bring a little bit of this down if I've got anything left. But such rich, powerful, fruity whiskey. Really enjoyable. Really getting a great mouthfeel. You've got, you know, you got the nose, the palate, the finish. So enjoyable. Literally all pluses for me. Um, texture of the whiskey. Only downside again is price. But if I had to put price out of it, it would have got higher. Um, and I was going to give it lower than this just because of the price. But... This is part of me that just really, really loves the 25 year old. And if I didn't know it was a uh, ex bourbon cask, I'd easily said sherry cask if it was a blind tasting because it's just those rich fruity notes just don't come out on a bourbon cask finish that I've tried in the past. So, are the bourbon cask whiskies I've tried. So, let me know if you guys have tried this one. What's your opinion on it? And um, on that note, I'm going to leave the video on that. 
Uh, be sure to check out the Special Strength and the AT, which I've done videos of in the past. Be sure to click the subscribe button. We're going to do a lot more crazy and you know expensive whiskey reviews, some more travel retail stuff, and uh, some independent bottlings from Mont Black, which I think are you know fantastic stuff as well. So on that note, this has been Jason from Whiskey Wise or Jason Whiskey Wise, and I'll catch you all for the next video.